Hi guys, Jay here and welcome to another episode of Sorority Right? So today we'll be continuing to play Chapter 2 So if you guys have not checked out the Chapter 1 video I have left the link in the description below So do check them out So without further ado, let's jump right into Chapter 2 Chapter 2 This is difficult, very difficult I'm not at all comfortable with this I keep reminding myself why I'm doing this. Spend the whole night at the mansion and leave at 8 6 am. Easier said than done. I tried to play it cool, but I couldn't ignore the panic starting to rise up in my belly. The front entrance wasn't locked, so I stepped inside. The silence was obvious and unnerving. With my flashlight in my hand, I looked around the house to see what it's really like on the outside, on the inside. Felt like I'm walking into a horror movie. I figured that someone was about to play a prank on me, so I stayed still and wait for someone to pop up to nowhere. There's a window just behind me. The curtains were light and translucent, so some light came through from the street light. The exact moment I, that I turned to look what it's like in the living room, and then crashing sound. What was it? Who could it be? Am I just overreacting? Did I hear it right? So many questions flooded my mind. Ha! Huh. Maybe I'm just getting too paranoid and jumpy. Crap! I need to find a place to crash for the night. I walked deeper into the house. I headed upstairs to find a room. I mustered the courage to get into front of the door. I wondered if I should turn around and go back. I cautiously stared at it, fearing for whatever was in there. I decided to hold the door knob, twist it, and pull it slowly. The door opened into a cold emptiness. I used the flashlight to look around. There wasn't really anything interesting about this room. I stepped back into the room and took a better look around with the flashlight, or using my shirt to cover my nose from the stench. And then, the very corner of the room, I saw her. It was a girl. Her back was towards me, and she stood facing the corner of the room. Her short hair was with a shade of purple stood still. I just stared at her for a minute, not sure of what to say. I didn't know what to do. I ran out of words to say, or maybe the best thing to do is to get out of the room and leave the girl alone. But before I could make another step, the girl speaks. Hey. Relief washed over me like rain when I he heard her voice. Hi. Who are you? My name's Yena. What, wh why are you here? What are you doing here? Maybe the same reason why you are here. So, so you're here for the initi initiation too? Yes, that's the reason I came here. Okay, so how do you end up here? Hey, you alright? I didn't expect that someone would be here. I thought I'd be alone in this house. Well, I'll try not to bother you then. No, no, I, that's not what I meant. I'm happy that I have company. Same here. This place gives me the creeps. Why are you hanging out in this room? I mean, it's a little odd. Don't you have some plans to explore the house or something? Not at all. I'm too much of a scaredy cat to go around this house. I see. If you don't mind me asking, why do you let yourself into in on this craziness? Venice promised me that everything will be in my favor after tonight. Didn't you get blackmailed into going through with this? I want to know more about you. Actually, no. Why? What's your story? Everyone has a story. Some are good and some are bad. Care to share? Let's just say I'm not too special. I'm average. Nothing noteworthy, really. I beg to disagree. I believe everyone is special in their own ways. Talk about me, my boy, you. Just forget about it, okay? 
no fuss. I have nothing more to say then. I didn't mean it like that. My name's Miles, by the way. I don't have any friends. People think I'm some kind of freak. I get bullied a lot. People love ruining my day whenever they get the chance. People can be very mean sometimes. When you don't fit in, I guess. People like to pick on you. I never fit in, too, because me and my dad move a lot. Is that where you're joining the sorority? No, nothing's gonna change anyway. I got used to it anyway. Doesn't bother me much. Cheer up, Mouse. We've got the whole night ahead of us. Yeah, so what do we do? What else could we possibly do around here? It's too dark. This is a really huge house. Perhaps we maybe could play hide and seek? We might get lost or something. It would be best if we stay here. Let's just imagine this is our weird slumber party. You seem to be afraid of a lot of things in this house. What are you most afraid of? Nothing particular, but I guess I'd say that I'm afraid of dark. And yet, I found you here, in the dark, all by yourself. Aren't you afraid of the dark? Not everyone is afraid of the dark. Yeah, and some people might are afraid of the light. I guess anyone can be afraid of anything. What do you mean? If it's something you can't ex understand or explain, there's a good chance you'll feel it. People feel what they don't understand. In that case, anyone can overcome their fears too, even darkness or death, if they understand them. As for me, well, I did plan on joining the sorority, but now I can. Why? Why don't want Venice being your big sister? You don't want Venice being your big sister? Well, that's a good reason, but the truth is, well, I just can't. Hmm, okay, hmm, I really want to take a look around, would that be alright? That's the last thing I want to do right now. Do you really want to go? Are you sure? Yeah, I've always been curious about this place. I've got a bad feeling about this. Listen up, it's gonna be alright, you don't have to come with me. No, there's something in here. You don't want me it. What is it? I don't think you'll believe what I'm going to tell you. Not likely. Truth is, I don't believe in ghosts and spirits and the like. But if I see one, well, I'll change my mind. It's not a ghost, it's something else. Not from this world. What is it then? It's some kind of triangular shaped entity. Okay, that does sound ridiculous. Not buying it. What else have you heard about this house? Well, I'm telling you, it's real. You may have felt it already. It can change your perception. Perceptions. Walls moving. I did feel something like that earlier. What else have you heard about it? You did? Oh, so that's why. Anyway, I first read about articles on the groups who tried to explore this place. Groups? What happened to them? Some people died here, autopsies couldn't determine the cause, it was like their brain just shut off. Others reported feeling the walls moving, nausea, dizziness, headaches, but went home unscathed. Those that did go home, however, never had a good night's rest again, their sleep was always interrupted. By what? Then there's the thing that comes into people's home, and does what? Oh god, that's insane. Nothing, just watches you. Accordingly, they wake up and see it's there. Heh, now that's creepy. Anything else? The story don't say. It's just watches. But they say that's actually the worst part. Imagine waking up and finding it there, and you know that it's been watching you. The feeling that you are never alone, never leaves you. That's something that you can can't avoid. Sounds crazy, but people always have told stories like that. Yeah, wonder where they got it from. You know what? Forget it. Forget what? You write. Write about what? Write about not to try and explore this place. And what made you change your mind? A lot really. I'm not taking any chances. Admit it. You got scared because of my story. Somehow, 
Not everyone has a brave heart after all. Besides, this house is very old. You might fall and slip into holes or something. Good to hear that, Mouse. I'm just glad you changed your mind. Maybe the best thing to do now is to try catch some sleep. Sleep. You still got classes tomorrow. I'm not too worried about that. Uh, I like you. I don't work well with lack of sleep. All right, Mouse. Let's news. It's hard to sleep knowing that Venice got us into this mess. Such an unbelievable spot, Brett. It would best be not best be best not to talk about her. Let's get some rest. We'll be out of here any time soon. Venice better make sure that after tonight they won't be bothering me anymore. Let's call it night. I think I saw a sweet looking bit in the room next to this one. Oh and Mouse, you said you didn't have any friends, right? Yep. Can I be your friend? Sure. Aunt Lilith, Aunt Lilith, I've done it. How many did you send in? Just one. Her name is Mouse and... Just one? So what's... Who's the other girl? <laughs> just one? Do you not understand how important this is? That thing in that house. The tri nemesis holds the key. I know. I've sent in two girls this week. I'm trying my best. I'm sorry, Aunt Lilith. Maybe, perhaps next week I'll... Nonsense, Venice. Dr. Rogerstein needs more data. Send in more people in or I'll pull the plug on your sorority. Aunt, I know you've taught me never to ask questions about what we do here, but what exactly do we need more? When your uncle visited that place, the tri nemesis gave him a gift of sorts, a tumor-like device in his head. You want to know why your uncle received that and if the tri nemesis will do the same to the other visitors. Also, the tri nemesis can achieve the consciousness transfer with its power to digitally extract consciousness. You can copy, delete, and move minds as easy as managing files. Imagine this power, Venice. We can usher into a new world. Yes, Auntie Lilith. I understand. But what about Yendere project? Can't we use them as test subjects? Sadly, the Yendere behind us is the last one. We've already destroyed the others. Send more people in by next week. Yes, Aunt Lilith. I will not fail you. So I guess that's it for chapter 2. Uh, we'll cut the video here. And if you guys do enjoy the video, do remember to hit on the like button. Leave your comments down below and subscribe to my channel for future content. And see you guys next time. Bye!